G'day people, hope you're having a fantastic day today and your family's all doing well. Okay, so we're uh, in episode 5 of my uh, show trucks. This is the uh, Hatter Built or Hater Built, just depends on how you want to say it, I'm pretty sure it's Hatter Built, uh, 379389. It's a free mod and I'll uh, place a link down in the description. Uh, so you can uh, grab it if you're interested. And um, yeah, like I say, it's the um, 379389 Peterbilt. We'll do a uh, slow pan around it so you can get a better look at it and see exactly what it's like. Comes together well, this one. It's got heaps of uh, customizations that you can do to it. Quite a few uh, paint jobs that come with it. And, um, yeah, so what we'll do is we'll have a look at uh, what sleeper and so forth that we've got on it. I have the 63-inch flat top sleeper. This fella here with the, I think it's a 6x4 standard chassis, yeah. You can't see it because it's behind my um, wheel cam there. It's the 6x4 chassis, and you've got quite a few different chassis that it comes with. 8x4 steerer, lowered, so forth. So you've got tons of chassis to choose from. I've chosen the uh, Cummins N14600 chipped, 605 horsepower, 2,750 newton metres. Of torque, it's coupled with an 18 speed Eaton. Uh, come on, load up. There we go. Yeah, with a final drive of 3.25. You've got uh, quite a few different dashes to choose from. You've got the new and old style dashes. I've gone with the, uh, the all black, <laughs> of course. But you've got, uh, yeah, you've got black, blue, gray, tan, red green so yeah quite a few different ones you can choose from let's have a look at the green one see what it looks like that's a green old style dash and the green new style dash as you can see it changes the uh, upholstery to that color got a red old style actually i'm looking at the old style now i don't mind it i think it's quite nice let's see what the old style black looks like yeah, what do you reckon, that one or that one? I'm going to stick with the new one. That's, that's the one I, uh, I originally went with. Okay, then you've got quite a few different paint jobs. Uh, we'll have a quick look at them. Actually, I don't mind that one with those rims. Comes up pretty good. Like the orange. Yeah, and like I say, quite a few different paint jobs. I'm just going to show you a couple of quick random ones. You can see what they're like. Ooh, Christmassy. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so there's quite a few. They're all black. Ooh, that one's not bad. I like that. Yeah, I like that a lot. Anyway, okay, so yeah, I've gone with the, what's it called? Black Knight paint job. Uh, quite a lot of customizations that you can do with it. I'll load those up. I'm not going to go through them all because we'll be here for three days and at least four nights. Because <laughs> there's quite a few, as you can see. Tons of customization that you can do with it. Um, I've put the green lights to give it a um, a bit of you know a bit of a break from the black, and put the green on the uh, hub covers and the wheel nuts it's also got an underglow um neon and i've gone for guess what green so of a night time it glows green underneath and it really looks the part and it's quite nice and uh, likewise with the interior you've got quite a few different uh customizations you can do inside g'day tykes how you going um yeah and the sleeper's quite spacious in the back there got a bit of uh reading material there <laughs> And uh, 
Yeah, so you, you can do quite a few different things on the interior. The gear shifts light up of a night time. And this one, it's just the uh, white around the 8 that lights up. But, uh, yeah, it adds a little bit of um, extra flair to it. Just that little bit extra. And, uh, yeah, let's jump back outside. The rims are ATX rims that I've got on it. Let's uh, check them. Yeah, ATX um, Barger is the ones that I'm using. So that's another thing you might want to have a look at if you're interested in those rims. ATX rims. All right, also the uh, trailer is... Okay, there we go. That took a while to load. Is a curtain side trailer. I've got the um, steerable rear axle. This one's a steerable, so it uh, makes it a lot more manoeuvrable. And it's got the uh, lowerable and raisable third axle, or fourth axle in this case. But yeah, the uh, the black matches the truck, and then you've got the spooky Halloween figurine there. It just comes together really nicely. Have another quick look at it. What we'll do is we'll jump outside and have a look at it in the daylight. Try again. Here we go. All right. So, yeah, there it is there. Step back a bit. We can have a quick look at it. Very nice truck. Comes together really well. All right. So what we'll do now is we'll go grab a job so that we can uh, see how it performs on the road. Go to the job market, cargo market, where are we at? I think we're in Lombok. Yep. Sorry, L Lubbock. I think that's how you pronounce it. And what will we do? Not anything too short. What's that one? Um, that's weird. Okay, so we've got 17 tons of used packaging. Woohoo! Going from Lubbock through to Clovis. So we'll take that job. Or will we? Yeah, we'll take that one. Set the GPS for that because it's nice and close. Jump back in the truck. Start her up, drop her into low, make sure that we've got the mirrors set up properly, yep they look fine, and Tiggs is uh, just stretching out ready for the drive, alright, Yeah, with the rear steer on this trailer, it just makes it so much easier to manoeuvre. So if you're looking for a fairly easy to manoeuvre, longer trailer, this would be the go-to. Use my indicator there. Oops. All right, so <clears throat> I got an email from uh, someone saying that maybe what I should do is instead of sticking to the format that I I have at the moment, where I show the show truck and the trailer, go and do a pickup. And then, whoops, and then um, go along for the ride and then do the drop off. And they said that unfortunately they, they love the pickup, they love the truck, the trailer, you know, viewing it, but um, 
they felt that the drive in between could be a bit boring sometimes if you're along on a long straight road straight stretch of road um, so they were saying that what I should do is possibly just do the pickup um, cut out the middle bit and then just do the drop off and if there's any highlights in between to maybe uh, include them but that, not the long drive so what I'm going to ask you guys to do is let me know what you think do you um, think that you know I should stick to the format that I've been doing where you come along for the pickup go along for the ride and the drop off or should I cut the middle bit out and just uh, show you the highlights just let me know in the comments below because I'd be interested to see because a lot of people say they enjoy just uh, going along for the ride because it's nice and relaxing and they get to see the countryside and uh, get to see how the truck handles. But yeah, I mean if you prefer the highlights, if the consensus is to just show the highlights, I'll be doing that or I'll um, stick to the format, whichever you guys prefer. Let me know. All right, so we'll take this job. Where's the pickup? We'll just top out and see if we can see it. Oh, it's down there. I've got it back in. Okay, what's the best way to do this? Alright. We'll do it this way. See if I can stuff it up. That'll be a highlight. <laughs> See if I can run into those pumps. Ooh, came close. Came very, very close. Look at that. Did well. Oh, what happened there? A bit of a um, hiccup in the game and lost steering. That was strange. Yeah, I was a bit too close to those pumps, so I might not be able to get around far enough now. I have to swing it right around. Oh yeah, I should be right. Don't normally reverse like this from the outside. I normally sit inside the cab, because I prefer to do it that way. Because normally when I do it this way, I stuff up. Let's see how we go. Oh well, we should be right. Seems to have come together okay. Wiggling around like a snake there. Not too bad. Okay, let's pick up. Alright, so let's have another look at the truck so you can get an idea what it looks like and whether it's something you'd be interested in. Like I say, it's a free mod. I'll leave a link in the description. And if you want to have a go at uh, creating your own customised one, have a look at the trailer too. Yeah, you'll be able to uh, use that link and uh, download it for yourself. And if you're uh, not sure how to download and inlo uh, install the mod, I've got a video about that as well, and I'll leave that in the link below, in the description below. So you can uh, have a look at that too, so you can uh, work out how to do it yourself. Alright, so we're off. So to that uh, guy that sent me the email, I'm going to stick with my old format on this one uh, and you know, just uh, video the whole trip, uh, but I'll leave um, timestamps in the description like I normally do, and if you want to, you can skip it and go directly to the drop-off. I'll, um, if there's any highlights, I normally leave them in the timestamps anyway. So, um, that might be the best way to do it. Just use your timestamps. And that way, for the people that want to, uh, come along for the whole ride, 
That was silly. Straight to fifth. <laughs> um, yeah, so anyone who wants to come along for the whole ride, they can. For those that um, want to um, skip it, then uh, that's weird. They came down and no train went through. Hopefully there's not one still coming. Can't see anything. So yeah, maybe that's the way to do it. Yeah, well, it's also uh, saying in an, uh, one of the vi previous videos that uh, I had a problem with the the transporter, the VW transporter, where I found a leak underneath the van, and uh, it turned out to be the power steering pump that was leaking. So uh, I took it in, got a quote. Turns out, yeah, it was definitely the uh, power steering pump the whole thing's buggered and needs to be replaced so that's what I'm doing but uh, at the same time the uh, instrument cluster is electronic one it's fly by wire or whatever you want to call it and the speedo stopped working along with the uh, fuel gauge and uh, yeah so oh <laughs> I was thinking I was turning there I get carried away sometimes talking and I forget what I'm doing. If I chew chewing gum and walk at the same time, I fall over. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, yeah, the instrument cluster was uh, mucking up. Speedo not working, fuel gauge not working. So, uh, yeah, they're going to have to fix that as well while they're there. Uh, they've got an old guy that comes in to do it, but unfortunately he couldn't come in until the afternoon, so they're going to have to hold it for another day. So I'm without the vehicle for another day, but that's not a problem. I can handle that. And I just missed the turn off because I was talking. <laughs> uh, I'm going to do something that I don't recommend you do in real life. And that is run a red light and then do a U-turn. So don't do this in real life. It's just I don't want to go another hour out of my way. I told you I'd stuff up. So where was I? Yeah, so the instrument cluster. This is the second time the instrument cluster is stuffed up on me. The first time, um, the only place I could get it done was a place in Germany, because they're a German vehicle, and um, I had to send away to get it replaced. So it's like a, a replacement um, system that they were using. So I sent my old one away, which took two weeks to get to them. They then needed it for a week to check it out and make sure I hadn't s sent them a complete dud. So in other words, unless they could re repair that one, they weren't going to send me the other one. So anyway, that took another week. They eventually sent it to me, so that took another two weeks in transport. So I was without one for about a month and a half. So I had no speedo, no fuel gauge. Cost me a squillion dollars. And uh, I got a five-year warranty with it, so I thought, oh, that's good. So about three years later, it's stuffed up, which is now. And I've got on the website to find out how I claim my warranty, but the website was no longer there. And uh, I find out they're out of business, so the five-year warranty was useless. Spend all that money. So beware, if somebody offers you a, a long-term warranty, Make sure they're a decent company and they're going to stick around for a while and back up that warranty. Keep left. And then turn left. Turn left. See if I get booked. Nope, got through that. I thought it might be classes going through a red light there. So yeah, um, 
cautionary tale there. If someone's going to offer you a long warranty, check into the company, make sure they're going to be sticking around for a while. That way uh, the money you spend will be uh, recouped if something does happen to it. So anyway, back to the truck. Yes, it's 379389. Hatter built, hater built. Um, and the curtain side steerable trailer. What do you think about the Jake brake? I like the Jake brake on this. It uh, reminds me about a truck that, or well, a few trucks that we used to drive down through Galston Gorge. Now that's a road in uh, New South Wales, Australia here. And it's an uh, extremely windy road. I'll leave a link to a map to show you it. And it goes down through this mountain, mountainous area in New South Wales. Down through the uh, gorge there. And I don't know if the road, it was a long time ago that I used to go down there. may have improved it, but I doubt it. And um, yeah, it's, like I say, it's claimed a lot of trucks down through there going off the edge. Or they get, just get stuck on the hairpins and can't get back out. Um, so yeah it's a bit of a nightmare but going down through there we used to have to use the jake brakes a lot because it's so steep and like I say with the tight hair, hairpin bends and uh, a lot of the trucks definitely had jake brakes that sounded like this Jump out onto the roof, have a look around, so you can check out the countryside, the farms. It's not easy to do and keep it on the road. So yeah, what um, what dash you, would you go with if, if you uh, remember the old style and the new style? Which one would you guys prefer? I like the old style one, but um, like I say, I went with this one because it just seemed to match this truck better. The style and so forth. silos back there see a lot of them throughout the Australian countryside whether they're wheat silos or not I'm not sure but they look like that there's more up in her head the uh, ones here in Australia have, uh, they've got uh, murals on them paintings by some artist I can't remember his name but if you look up on Google you'll see them Incredible some of the paintings that he's done on them. 
Oh, that's not wheat silos, but... Yeah, that's... Uh, well, is it? Yeah, it is. And, um, like I say, he's painted them and... Yeah, they're a real uh, tourist attraction now. Helps sort of draw tourists into the old country towns so they're not... Uh, and helps with the economy. Hop back outside and have a look at the uh, truck while we're here. Now I like how the uh, Peterbilt sign on the hood there lights up. Don't know if I could get that in the green instead of the uh, mauve or purple, whatever it is. I'll have to have a look at that just so I can keep the colour coordination. Yeah, this track's not a speed demon, it's um, got an average, well, average in the game size motor, just the uh, 605 horsepower. Most of the show trucks that I have have a um, thousand plus horsepower motors in them. But this one I stuck with the 605. I don't know why, but it, you know, probably because I like the sound of the exhaust and the, uh, the jake brake on it, more than likely. I just can't remember offhand why I went with that, but I've stuck with it, and um, like I say, it's no speed demon, but it does the job. Okay, not far now. Keep left. And then turn left. Let me in. Thank you. Turn left. Up back outside again. That's a problem with these uh, traffic lights, especially when you're two or three cars deep. Sometimes you don't make it and you've got to wait another turn or you get booked for going through a red light. Let me in. Look at that, he's not going to... Jeez, he didn't want to. Like that Jake break. In four hundred Okay, just about to drop off. The parking areas down the back here. It's a nice easy one. Just slot in there and we're all done.
<laughs> Hopefully I won't overshoot it. Beautiful. That worked out well. Alright, hop outside, see how we went. Yep. Look at that. Magic parking. <laughs> Wasn't hard. Okay, we'll drop the uh, cargo off. So yeah, we did 118 miles, three, just under four hours, 37 gallons of fuel used, 5,000 bucks, we'll take that, thank you. And uh, we'll hop out and have another look at the truck for you. So you can see uh, it in all its glory again. There's the trailer with the rear stairs. Yeah, like I say, just like the package, it comes together good with the trailer and everything. It just um, looks like it was made for it. And the green just um, sets it off. All right. So, uh, yeah, if you've got any questions, like I say, I'll leave all the links to um, the mods down below to, for the truck. And uh, I'll leave a link to that Golston Gorge so you can have a look at that road. Um, and see what I mean it, you know if you check it out on Google you'll see that a lot of trucks get either stuck there or, or run off the road because of the, how sharp it is and how steep it is but uh, yeah thanks for coming along for the ride hope you enjoyed it and uh, yeah, if you've got any questions just leave them in the comments below any suggestions same thing or email me either way and uh, yeah hopefully I'll catch you in the next one bye for now